Rewind St. Lunatics. You see me. I don't care if you're looking or not, man. Lunatics for life, man. This is Breaking Records Radio. Hey, yo, hey, yo. It's your boy Monster Man Rocco. It's your boy Swagger Rock. This is Snack Ripper. And you have to go to Don't Know. This is Master A. You are not rocking with the best. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records, man. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records. Breaking Records. Breaking Records Radio. Let's go. Breaking Records Radio. Press the five now. Breaking records, man. Radio is like the place to be. I don't fuck strange music, man. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out, Breaking Records Radio and the place to be. It's your host, Maloney, and I got a very special guest on the phone with me right now, man. We have Kiwan of the St. Lunatics on the phone, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. We need some sound effects. Oh, I'm good, man. You see me? Yeah, man. Um, You know, how's it been like, because uh, you're, you're in St. Louis still, right? Yeah, I just got back. I just moved back here. Oh, word. Okay. And, um, in November, yeah. I was in Houston for about three years. Then I did Atlanta for a year. So we merged because he's, he's in Atlanta. Yep. And uh, and then I just came back here. Uh, came back here for a small visit with my daughter and had a couple meetings. I ended up with a smoke shop and um, a situation with some medical marijuana. So uh, it kind of kept me here and I just ended up buying a, getting a little apartment condo and chilling here for a minute oh word up man um and actually with you saying that too that's the level smoke that you're talking about right yeah level smoke i guess word man and um that's pretty dope man like uh what's it been like though like in say like uh whereabouts you're at uh with you know this whole virus and shit going on you know i've talked to some people in new york some people in uh like philly and a few different states but i haven't talked to anybody like in the midwest area. right in, in the in the middle yeah uh it's pretty much it's pretty much uh going on you know it's not as much as other places that are more populated of course but people are still taking precautions we still are supposed to be in the house at eight or nine o'clock things are closing early opening late only essential places are open, so yeah, we're pretty much going through it too. Everybody going through it. So has that affected the smoke shop for the time being? Then, like, have they? Have yeah, they, definitely. Yeah. I mean, well, we could you could open, but we wasn't we wasn't that type of uh, environment because you could just get a lot of our stuff. You know, it'd be good right now to get like stuff like hookahs and stuff like that. But other than that, people pretty much can go to the gas station and get you know lots of stuff, so they won't come past out their way to really come to the shop, so yeah. it wasn't it wasn't worth even being outside and everybody bringing in germs and things of that nature, so it's safer just to hold on for a minute. Yeah, definitely. And that, you said people get buds, at, so is it, it's legal then, I guess, where you're at too then, eh? In, in it's, the it's, 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 it just passed the medical uh, law. Oh, okay. It just passed the medicinal law, but um, Illinois, which is, you know, away is is uh recreational okay so they just became recreational in january and we just everybody just got their license to get dispensaries and cultivation is about to start so all of this stuff is kind of throwing it up too because people are building out their dispensaries and cultivation spots right now yeah yeah, it's a beautiful business to be in right now, man. You know, we just got legalization a little over a year ago for recreational, and it's, uh, you know, it's different, though, because we were in the medical period before that, so we had a lot of, like, underground dispensaries and stuff and a lot of gray area laws where the cops mm-hmm. didn't really do much. But, um, as soon yeah, as they passed... I definitely know. You all got some cool gray up there. Yeah. Yeah, man. But, um, once they passed the, uh, laws for the recreational, it actually, like, it went from before where we had, like, eight laws that criminalized marijuana to where, like, now there's, like, 50 plus because it's a legal business, right? So it kind of actually fucked the game up a little bit up here. Right. I feel that. I feel that. I don't know what it's going to be here, but I just want to get on the business side. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. That's right. And you guys, uh, you know, you've always been a bit of a business mind, you know. You guys did the Vape Your Tail Feather, uh, you and Murph did that a few years vape. ago. Yep. We did the Vape Your Tail Feather. I had a, uh, we had an air pressure called Airplay. Um, we did, I, me and Murph owned two wines, one called Freaky Moscato and one called The Best uh, Wines. We had a Moscato, we had a uh, Blackberry, and we had a Peach. And all of it was all 11% alcohol. It was the best shit ever. It was sweet enough for a woman to 
strong enough for a man. <laughs> you know, so right now we're just focusing more on um, the tire. You see me, um, movies, and Murph's album. Dope, so there's a new Murphy Lee album in the works right now then. <laughs> Yeah, it's called it's called second time around. Ah, okay, dope. Is that um yeah. the joint you uh, sent me over while I'm at it? Is that uh from that that album or is that just something else Murph had uh, with you in the stash kinda that you guys are working on? Uh, that's just something we had. That's just something we had. That's just stuff we had in the stash. Uh, Murph actually is dropping tomorrow. It's starting uh, uh, Murph Monday, so he's dropping um a song every Monday. Okay, dope. Uh, so that. Yeah, so then while I'm at it, we come out, I think, next week. Okay. But, yeah. And that, uh, yeah, we, I think, I think you're dropping a song called Repeat tomorrow. I'm on that, too. I don't know if I sent it to you yet. It's, yeah, it's a song about seeing the same thing, hearing the same thing in the industry right now. That's all. Dope, man. And uh, the other joint you sent me to, I like the while I'm at it joint. You know, I like the uh, vibe of it. It's, like, a little different, you know. Yeah, to sit back. Yeah. yeah. But it's a little different than like you know what I'm used to from you guys kind of too. So like it was, it's like nice, different, refreshing. Like what do you find like, you know, with all these years in the game, what what do you guys, well more so yourself, but like still use to uh, motivate yourself to you know continue being creative and pushing different boundaries and stuff. Because like when you guys came in the game, you had your own sound. You know what I mean. So what do you kind of, you know, what inspires you guys to you know continue to elevate your sound after so many years in the game and shit. But really, really the sound is the sound to, to us. It's, it's really about the topic matters or the, uh, the different angles and things of that nature. Uh, when you mess with a certain type of producer, you're going to get that sound that you want anyway. Yeah. Kind of. We just do us, man. We A lot of times we've, we've done 100 songs and we had a world 10. So a lot of times we... The world don't even know what we all can touch on, you know, what we have or wanted to or et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? We didn't really get a chance as a group to really get the other side of, you know, what was put out there for real. So it's kind of a balance, man. You know, a lot of times, you know, you'll wait so long trying to get the perfect one and then you'll lose because you're trying so hard to get the perfect one and, there, and there's no such thing. So right now we just got the vibe of just putting out everything in our email. Just do more. Yeah. You know, by the time you get a chance to, by the time you get a chance to say I didn't like it, I did like it, here comes another one anyway. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, and then whichever one bite, bites. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times you, you try to do one thing good and you end up waiting forever, you know what I'm saying? So we got a lot of music, especially Murph. Murph probably records three times a day. Wow. Like two, two, two or three songs a day for a long time. He's kind of chilled out right now. Right now he's just polishing and putting things together. I think he has a um, he has like a 420 um, situation going on, a little EP or something, an EP about some righteousness and cultural stuff. Then uh, and he's doing his work Mondays until the end of the year. So, but in the meantime, we're just trying to just build and just don't want to like we sitting back waiting or doing nothing or, you know, and the whole time we've been working and, and just getting back because music is like, it's a self-healing thing anyway. It's like Wusa. So, we'll never stop, I'll never stop recording. Even though it's not my main to get up in the morning to do, but I'll never stop recording or writing or creating. It's just, you know, I've been doing it before people heard us, and I'll do it after, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man, you know, and, uh, like, cause you, yeah, cause you, Murph, Murph's your younger brother, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you've been doing this, like, uh, long before him, cause you would've brought him into the Lunatics back No, then. we was no, we did the same time. Oh, really? We, because, yeah, cause what you have to realize is that Murph hung with me, too. Okay. Like, he, he was, it was kind of forced, but I didn't mind because of his behavior. Yeah. And because of the way he held himself down. And he wasn't, he wasn't, he learned not to, he, 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 he did a great marketing job of staying out the way, but still with me, you know? Yeah. Where you didn't hear him much, he didn't cry, he didn't, you know, 
obviously he wanted to go home. He didn't, you know, he didn't think he was hungry. And then he just manned it up, manned up. And learned, he learned so much so early. So right when we, I probably was like, you know, maybe a couple months, six months or a year before him, but I was playing around with it then anyway, me and Nelly. And then by the time we actually was rapping and said we were going to form a group, he was in that room. Okay. But he was so young that we were just calling him a feature, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was pissed at that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you talking about Kobe Bryant. You talking about close the room and keep writing. He just turned up. Yeah. Like, I'm a feature. So like, put, no way. I probably put the fire no, in him. Uh, to really get sharp, because Murphy's always been sharp, man. You know what I mean? Like as long as I've been, yeah, yeah, he is. He, he is. It's weird because I, because growing up, me and Nelly used to always, you know, like we big sports, we big in sports. So when we was gonna watch him play, like baseball or something, he was the best one on his team, but he wasn't like a natural us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was good though. Like, but we was like, you know. So get drafted type shit. But he was always good. He was always athletic, but he just he just didn't have an extra that spunk in that in that particular sport. But then when it came to start rhyming, he, that was his that was his uh <laughs> that was his he should be in the league mode. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like from the first rap he was then like, What the hell is that? Like where'd that come from? Like, golly but he always been that man with music. He do it so easy. I just sit in the studio and just watch it. He'd be like, man, you just, you done? Like, yeah. I'm, just, I'm like, man, that was hard. Just over it. You yeah. know, he don't sit at home and just write raps. Yeah. You know, like, I sit down and write, because I like writing poetry. I just write just to get off my mind. So anything you're for me is my news for the day. It's not my, I don't just be like, ooh, eyes and ease. I just be like, shit, this is how I feel. Boop, 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 boop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I go about my business, and, you know, that's not my, that's not my thing. I'm more into, like, what you do with the music after we do it, how we looking, how we talking, how we moving, how we gonna feel this, how we gonna roll this out. That's always been me. Yeah, and I heard you say that as yeah. well, too, on the, um, the Reason to Doubt podcast, you said you're like, you, you're always more about the hustling, the marketing, and you, ha- you had a quote, you said, I got enough on, onf- on offense, I'm going to play D. I thought that was a, a good uh, comparison, but it, it, it made me wonder too, because, you know, back in the days, like, I was a huge St. Lunatics fan back when you guys first came out, Nelly fan, all that shit, and I always kind of wondered, because, like, Ali put the solo album out, and then, like, a year or two later, Murphy had his, but I, there was never a Kiwan, or a Kiwan solo album, and I was always kind of curious about that but is that because you were kind of more into the marketing of like your your guys whole brand and image and stuff and like what you guys are going to do with the music opposed to putting an album together no it's more or less like i don't i don't like cheating the game so if i'm not gonna wake up every day and go to practice every second and go to weight room and all that then i'm not gonna have to be drafted either you know what I'm saying? So it's like I know what it is after you're done with the music. Yeah. You know, and it's not always, you know, you ask about Jackson, somebody do they want their kids to play football, they're gonna be like, nah. You know what I'm saying? So that's not my love as much as like I it's hard to see me in front of ten thousand people by myself. Yeah. But I can but I can be in front of ten thousand people talking to young adults and kids or teaching or talking, you know what I'm saying? Like it just ain't my it just wasn't my thing, so I'm not gonna lie and just be like, Okay, I can fuck the game up, I can get Murph to help me with the hook, I can do this with this and I can just put that together and I can come out. You know what I'm saying? And it just ain't been my comfortable mode. I'm actually more into it now than I am then because I know I can go out here and I can sell fifty thousand and I can go back over here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'd rather treat like an experience and then uh, then just the uh, top forty let's go. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not really on that. But I do have a way that I can uh put together some stuff and make some music the way I wanna make it. You know, I actually started on something. You know, it's called Wake it's called Wake Bake and Create. Wake Bake Create. So I don't know. I think Murphy and I'm trying to put it together for me. They like we gonna put it together for you. I recorded I probably recorded about seven songs by myself for my whole life. Oh really? Yeah, that's how much I record I don't I 
that ain't my thing. I might be in the studio all the time, like, you know, helping with angles and things of that nature, but I just ain't sit there and really put together songs and albums and nah. But I, I definitely wrote, I definitely written about 30 movies. I have about 30 movies in my stash. Holy shit, eh? Yeah, that's my thing. So, nah, I did some soundtracks and shit like that, but I ain't really, uh, I ain't really uh, a high-speed chase of a solo career. What the? Now we think about doing this, this duo called Gwen's Kids. Now I do it with my brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do it all day. But just being like, my concept, like, I want to be in a good space where I, I can do it, my own capital, my own, <laughs> how I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to do it how I want to do it. Otherwise, I don't want to waste my time doing it. No, I feel that, man. And I, I didn't realize yeah. you wrote, uh, you know, so many movies and stuff either. Curious, because I can't remember uh, the name yeah, of it. Yeah, I directed a couple of videos, a lot of videos, too, that's been out. Uh, I just, my name is on there sometimes. And sometimes I go back and look at it now, and, like, my name is on there. It's weird as hell. But uh, they always try to attach you with somebody else who's bigger than you. You know, they never trusted. They never trusted our group, period. They never trusted the whole St. Long Six Nelly. They never trusted it. It's always been, it's always been, uh, probably one year in our life, it was like, okay, we believe you. You know what I'm mean? saying? Yeah. Everything else has been like, I don't know, but I'm telling you, boom, I don't know, boom, I don't, because you don't, because it's, it's new. That, yeah. that lets you know that, that it's new. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even have a concept. You can't even, you know, when people deal with labels, they deal with John versus 1890. You know what I'm saying? They deal with something that happened already. They, it's not too many new vibes. New vibes come from independence. Somebody who's not scared of it and it worked. And then they'll take it and be like, okay, yeah, Drake drop tomorrow. We can do it. You know what I'm saying? But they're not going to be the one to be like, okay, drop tomorrow. They're not going to be the one to do that. It's going to be independent people who do risky things. Labels, most labels, big labels, <clears throat> which I don't know what that means anymore, but, uh, you know, some of the original labels, put it that way, they are more like pen and paper numbers. We need four months. Uh, like, yeah, do it by the books and, you know. This, yeah, ain't by the book until the book get broken by an independent person. And then yeah. they'll take their swag and then be like, okay, it can be done. Now we can't do it. Well, but no, it has to be a light-skinned person with a beard from Canada. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the, it won't be a, a sink. You know what I'm saying? Like, they won't be like, okay, Beyonce, you do it. They have to be exactly what they saw. There's never no swag. It's never no new type of vibe in that, man. That's crazy. Yeah. If it is, it's from a new A and R that's like an uh, intern that just took his chances outside of it and did it. You know what I mean? But yeah. other than that, yeah, mm -hmm. it's true, man. Not gonna lot, in the time of the internet, you know, there has been a lot of like, um, you know, a lot of things that have kind of shown in the record labels. You know how much things have changed, and you know the beauty of independence and like making risky moves, like you said. You know, and there's a lot of things that labels used to not touch with a fucking 50 meter pole and nowadays it's one of their marketing techniques because they've seen independent artists do it and stuff you know like even the whole like um having artists claim they're independent even though they're like actually secretly backed by labels and shit like that like all these like little tech you know what i mean like there's all these like little sneaky shit that they do now that and it's right like you they're all kind of all these ideologies are kind of born by independent artists who try them and pull the risk first and once it's proven to be successful the labels just steal that format and go with it right and then they always be in the office like well if he did it and he only had this amount of pool <laughs> imagine if we have all our people do it you know yeah. it's gonna definitely work you know what I'm saying so definitely and that it's, it's really proven by the labels that's ahead of time like the uh the smarter labels like QC and Top Dog and uh, MG, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Cash Money and all that. Like uh, they're winning more because they're doing stuff that an artist would do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, without nobody holding your arm, and they treat them different. Like I'm an artist too, so 
even got it. Like, I'm honest too, so I know I want my freedom. So I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to tie yours down. Yeah. I'm going to let you do you. You know? Like, just imagine, imagine if, imagine if Baby and then would have let Lil Wayne do him earlier. Facts. Facts. Because you can tell, like, you can tell the difference between, that's why people love his mixtapes, because that's when he didn't have nobody around him but his friends. Yeah. And when it comes to the label, they have a and and Baby there, so they got it. Yeah, they're making them make you know their records and getting certain vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, because Weezy, right. really, when he first started doing those squad tapes, you seen a different side of Weezy, and then from there, it just blew up when he, you know, Exactly. Yeah. That's what his friends, that's what his friends, like your son or something, when you playing the game, if you listen to him, he talk totally different than he talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or your daughter, whoever, when they talk on the phone with their friends, that's, a, that's the person, like, that's, that's the other you. You know, this is the you that comes to the, uh... You know, if you have a job, uh, if you're going to get a job, but okay, this is the person after the job. You know what I'm saying? That's how I treat you too, as a parent. Yeah. Or as a corporate person. You know? That's true, man. I never really even thought about that aspect of it too, but that's why I think, like, maybe even like a lot of artists, you know, like a lot of classic albums in hip hop, um, are by art, uh, a lot of artists' classic albums in hip hop, a lot of times, you know, are their first albums. And that probably has a lot to do with a lot of that material being written, you know, well, them being the true them. You know what I mean? Like, just hanging out with yeah. people and shit like and, that. And it got something to do with it. And it got, it got 80% to do with the customer. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, that's why it's so, it's going to, that's why it's always going to be hard for 50, T.I., Lil Wayne, Melly, um... Name a few games, uh, yeah, Eminem even. Yeah, it's, it's harder for them to be on the radio or be in the vibe they was because we already have a perception of them. So when they turn in a record, if you're not doing what they want you to do, what they think you should do, like they become in on us. We, the the social media and the stuff like that, helped us become a and us. It helped us be in a position to say, I would have did this. When we, I never knew how much LL Cool J sold. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I never know how much Curtis, I never knew how much they sold. I never knew what they did the first week. I never, we going on that. Yeah. We going on, yeah, I like it better when, you know, he was on what's name them beats. Like, you got a chance to straight up do that as a, as a customer. So, your first, the first time you didn't because you didn't know me. <laughs> so you didn't have a chance to even judge me. That's now true. once I gave you this, now you try to match that with that, you know. So I'm vegan, so I understand, like, th this morning you ate a piece of chicken, and I'm trying to give you a piece of vegan chicken. Like, it's not going to be the same. But this is good, though, right? But if you're trying to say, do it taste like that, it's going to be a no. Yeah. But is it nasty? No, it's not nasty. Exactly. So you can do something different. That's the, that's the point. You know, if you keep saying do it taste like chicken, they're going to keep saying no. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's subconscious. Like, if I keep saying fuck the police instead of saying fuck that particular police, then we never going to get anywhere because we're fighting something that's too big. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You saying fuck school instead of saying fuck math class. Like, yeah. say exactly who you talk to because now, you telling me fuck me and I ain't even the one doing that, so I'm not gonna tell you who be doing bad. You you grouped us together, so we all together. We attack things too when I'm in the organization where so we attack, we just attack mentally things big and don't know we have to do one at a time because there are some just police out here. <laughs> Facts. And if we keep telling our children you weak for trying to even be a police, then we never would get good police. Yeah. We're always going to end up with the person that was terrible in school and didn't have no friends, and now he's a policeman. Instead of getting the cool guy to, you know what I'm saying? So they be like, man, it's not enough for us being policemen. It's not enough for us trying out either. Yeah. You feel me? Because if you tell your father that you're going to be a policeman, they be like, if you're from the street, they're going to be like, no, no, you're not. You're not going to be on police. I'm like, what? 
you want them to be police. So bullshit, can, uh, so things can stop happening in a certain way. You know, if I'm doing something, if I bump the stop sign and then you pull me over and I'd be like, bruh, I left my life. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, all right, I feel you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you got a dead body in the back seat, then you need to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? That's facts. But it's just the extra things like, you pull me over for my light being out, but then you can check my trunk. We check my trunk for so say, hey man, your light out, man. Make sure you fix that. Everyone take it to remind you. You don't say, hey, pop the trunk. Let me see if you ran dirty. What? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's the difference, though. A lot of lockups come from the extra questions, not just the actual doors. You know no, what I'm saying? Definitely. So, that's anyway. it, that's why I feel like there's so many little nuanced things that are deemed quote unquote illegal. It gives people, an ex- it gives the police an excuse to, you know, cross their boundaries that they can't technically no. legally cross without having some reason to suspect shit. So they make a bunch of other shit right. illegal, and they're like, oh well, he, he his light was out or this or you know what I mean? I had, I had a reason to search. Mm-hmm. And it's like, nah, you still didn't really. You know what I mean? Like, someone's light being out doesn't justify reason to search their shit or any of that. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Right. I, I went through it the other day. I was in a pageant seat. The light was out. Well, I mean, something was weird. It was like some little. And it was like, that's your ID. I'm like, why? <laughs> what do you mean to my ID? I'm on a pageant side. Yeah. And you're talking about a blinker. You're not even talking about somebody threw something out the car or you're talking about a blinker or a, a light tail light or something. Man, you better, man, listen. You're going to have me on the news. Yeah, like it's completely unrelated. Like there's no reason you would need to know the passengers. Right. I I'm a grown man, man. Go with that, man. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, man. But, you know, I do want to, I want to go back a little bit into the history a little bit too. Um, You know, being a huge St. Louis okay. fan coming up. Um. How did um like how did the whole Saint Lunatics thing kind of originally form? Um, it, it's um well it really formed because I don't, I don't know if Ali and Ali uh, my cousin Tony Davis which is T Love the manager and Yella Mac the road manager they were our friends and Ali wasn't even in the group at first. He was like the manager. Oh, really? Yeah, he was above us. Like, he, he already had songs, and, like, he was putting it together. Like, he was, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was playing around. He just knew we had the characters to be artists. Yeah. Like, he never heard us rap and be like, find me an alien. It's like, y'all rap? We like, nah. Like, y'all should. You know what I'm saying? He called us that a look and a feel is so much more, just as important, not so much, but just as important as your words. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he just saw how we was getting on the streets, how much people loved us, and uh, athletic, our dress code, you know, our manners, but still street, you know what I'm saying? Our hustle. So he just asked me rap, and then one, one day, I guess we ran the keyboard from somebody and uh Spur was making beats and then he was like, Everybody come to the house and everybody came to the yellow house and he just was teaching us, uh No, nah, after a while everybody left and it was just five of us and it was the five that you see, you know, and he was just like write a rap without cursing. That was our first lesson. Like write a rap without cursing. Because wow. we was like we was we was spitting weeds, taking heads off shoulders, some crazy, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was, like, shooting people in the face and everything. Yeah. And he was like, right one without cursing. And we was like, what? And that was weird as hell. And we spent the whole night doing it. <laughs> and we came up with a song, and we came up with a song called Ragged and Dirty. And we took that to the talent show, won a talent show, won like $300. And she, it was on. It was on from that point on, for real. And then Ali, and then um, one of the guys moved to a different neighborhood, and uh, he ended up getting on drugs uh, real bad. And he had got off the, he had, he wasn't showing up. So 
after a while, after we start getting into the groove of rapping to make a couple of songs, Ali blended in and became part of it too. Because ah. we wasn't even ready. We weren't even ready to be like Trigger or Groove. Ali, you know, coming from his stand, he wasn't, like, we wasn't even, you know, ready to be, you know, group with him. And we haven't rapped none and he good at it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it didn't make no sense. But then after we start rapping, let's start to vibe and then it fit perfectly. Wow, that's crazy. You know, so everybody's one year apart. Like, everybody's, I mean, yeah, everybody's like one, one and a half years apart from Ali to Nelly to Spud to me to Murph. Oh, shit, eh? I mean, Murph is four. He's three and a half under me. And then everyone else has like a year apart from each other. Yeah, so we were different grades. Yeah. You feel me? So, like, I was a star at this level. He, Nelly was a star. You know what I'm saying? Like, me and him still play baseball together sometimes because I went up. You know, I play JV as a freshman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, certain things we would do together, but. Nah, we all were different ages and our own kind of separate friends. Me and Nelly had some of the same friends, but I still had my own group of friends too. You know. Crazy, man. So, like, what year was it like that? Like, uh, you know, like, you guys really kind of. Like, yeah, what year would the talent show up? There? It had to be. It had to be around 95. I, I was out of high school, so it had to be 90. 596. Cause the first song we had on radio was nine ninety seven. And that was the "Give Me What You Got." Yeah, can't remember nine seven seven. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it had to be around ninety four ninety five. I wouldn't rap when I was in school. I just know that for a fact. Yeah. Crazy. So probably ninety five. That's crazy, man. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's. Looking back at it now, it's insane to think that. Like, I was five years old when you guys, you know, were first, you know, really forming the group and shit. Like, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Right. That's wild. That is. I grew, I grew up on your guys' shit, man, you know, so it's just it's crazy, like, you know, even thinking back then, it's like, because by the time the world got introduced to you guys, it was like 2000, 2000, I'd say around 2000, right? 2000. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, like, 2000. even thinking like five years before that, you guys doing your thing, you know, and then... Man, them years felt like forever in between it, from like, from like 90, when we started to 97 to get on radio, it felt like forever, and then from getting on radio... To getting a deal, I mean, I don't, was, I don't know, was it called a deal? I don't know if that was a deal, a signing. Because people say deals, but a deal means something. When you say deal, that means <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you're not getting, I mean, you're not getting fucked. How, how am I getting fucked? It's called a deal. That, that's nah, that's called signing. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a deal. A record deal, nah, for you. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs>
kids I was running for 70. Yeah. Cold. So, and then Nelly had t-shirts. And then we found um, a guy that had a pound of weed. So we, we had everything, and we was just at the hotel just kicking in and hustling. Because we make money during the day, and then we spend it at the night, nighttime. Yeah. And uh, we met Trail, which is, which at that time was Mace Security. Oh, shit. So he, he, he was at our hotel, but Mace was at another hotel. So it was like a bunch of them. So it was like a whole neighborhood. So they called security, whatever. And he was like, yo, where y'all from? And we was like, St. Louis. He was like, man, y'all from Hustle, motherfuckers, B. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ain't nobody that ain't nobody that hustling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nobody. So it's like, why y'all? And we clean though. We ain't like, hey man, I got this. You know, we ain't doing that. We just like, shit, we got it. What you need? You know what I'm saying? We chilling. Yeah. But uh, cause we had drink it up. We wouldn't even really occur like that. But it was just the fact that we had it. It was weird. So he ended up he ended up meeting my cousin Tony T Love, the manager. His wife's sister. They ended up linking up, but I, just, me and Nelly didn't know that. Like me and Nelly was on different levels than T Love. T Love was, T Love was good. Like he was in linen suits and shit and banker style. Yeah. Right. We was we was at the Marriott. Put that way. <laughs> <laughs> they was at the Lock County. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, shit. Uh, we didn't know that they even met. Right, because but because Trail was with Mace, then they end up in the same circles. Anyway, we get home and um and me and Nelly come in the basement and Trail is there from New York. He's from Harlem. He in the basement in St. Louis. Like, what is you doing? So the whole time he down there listening to us on the tape because he loves playing them his group's music. Yeah. But he don't know it's us, though, because there ain't no picture. So we come downstairs, and we're like, man, you you, you, you from Cancun? Yeah, B. He's like, couldn't forget us. Like, every day he spoke to us. We was there for seven days, so every day. Come on, you come in. Come here. So, so every day we saw him, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he's, like, he's like, oh, yeah, that's us right there. He's like, that's y'all. He already liked it. And he was like, that's y'all. I know y'all from Hustlers. I know y'all is. I saw y'all in action. Like, I'm going to get y'all a deal. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it started. Wow. And then Trill, and then we all, we all ended up money to buy T-Love a suit to go to Jermaine Dupree's birthday party in Atlanta. And we spent like $2,000 on the suit. And we, we ain't going in, though. We ain't had no invitation. So you got to know that Jermaine Dupree's bodyguard Big Bob is from St. Louis as well. Oh, yeah. So that's who signed Jaquan. Right? So when, so we had like, kind of like two invites for him to get in. So he was getting in to get the tape to Mace or Jermaine Dupree. He ended up giving the tape to Mace, but Mace already had a group called Harlem World. Yeah. So he packed, so he packed, so Kuda was like, let me get it. Kuda took it, because Kuda is Nate's manager. Bam. So that's like Saturday and Sunday event. We go home Monday on a voicemail. It's Kuda on a voicemail. Say, call me back. I've been listening to the CD all night. Call me back. We call Trail, like, who is Kuda? He's like, Kuda, Mace. Kuda schooled me to the game. Now I know my duty. He, he's the biggie manager and all this, blah, 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 blah. So he's like, okay, no, we call him Monday, call him back. I'm I'm living with love. That's why we end up coming to the basement. Yeah, the basement was mine for real. You know what I'm saying? I had a room down there, and uh, that's my older cousin. So I stayed there. So I'm I'm hearing everything, seeing everything. That's probably why I'm into business too, with the hell, because I'm seeing I'm around it so much. And then uh, he ended up uh, calling him back, and then that next Saturday he flew us out. And he wanted to hear us on some different beats besides J.E. beats. He didn't like J.E. beats at all. Oh, yeah. But you see what we end up with, right? Because <laughs> we never played, we never played with our, what, what got us there and what's going to make us move. Yeah. We stood, we stood ground on a lot of things. The label wanted ride with me to be first, not country grandma. You got to understand. We stood on a lot of things. We miss, we miss some balls too, but we stood on a lot of ground of uh, what we wanted because for you to take
tell me that you don't know, then how can you know? Yeah. Why don't I know? Why don't I know more than you about us? If you never even examined nobody from St. Louis. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. So that's just real talk. But it all comes from preparation, man. For real, you know, we're prepared, man, and that's the biggest thing. Um, a lot of people are not. They're not prepared. You yeah. know. That's a crazy story, sure. man. You know, it's like it's insane how like. You know, how, like, important these little, like, connections are. You know what I mean? Like, for you guys to meet dude in Cancun and then for him to happen to meet, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, happen to be in St. Louis. It happened like, to be in St. Louis. It's like, he ended up marrying Keisha. And guess what? The crazy thing is, he killed himself two years ago. Say what? The guy we met, the guy we met in Cancun? Yeah. He killed himself. What? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or made it, somebody made it look like it. Yeah. Whichever one that is, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> Be real, yep. That's unfortunate. But, yeah, Mary Keys, he married that girl and moved her and everything. Wow. Yeah, we had like four or five New York people that married some little girl and moved here. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, we got some different type of women here, boy. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, like every little bitty, every little, it's so many little bitty things. Like DMX being drunk or whatever, all that shit helped. You know what I'm saying? Like DMX probably helped us twice in a big way. And he wouldn't even know it right now. DMX you know what I'm did? Huh? You say DMX helped in a big way? Yes. How did he help twice. the group? The first time was he, um, he didn't show up for the concert in St. Louis ah. for the tour with Cash Money. Cash Money, I think Method Man was, I think it's a couple people on there. Red Man, Man, I say it was weird. But we end up, the label called us and said, it's our hometown. And we hadn't did a big one yet, a big show yet. Yeah. So he's like, he's like, yeah, make my showing up. Do y'all think y'all can handle it? Yep. We ended up being on the rest of the tour. Wow. Yep. And then, the second time was at the MTV Awards. The first time we was on at the awards, we wasn't supposed to be there. The time, I think, when Nelly Pants was falling down, he had some black leather pants with his shirt off. Yeah, yeah. We, we, wasn't, we wasn't supposed to be there. We were wow. supposed to be, you know how they do the outside shows before the... You, <laughs> You know, tomorrow by the uh, red carpet. Yep. That's what we were supposed to do. And DMX didn't show up for rehearsal that day. No shit, eh? And they said, you think you can handle it? What? Turn up. <laughs> That's crazy. Turn up. That's crazy. Shouts out to X. He doesn't... He doesn't even know that he fucking helped you guys that big earlier in your careers, eh? Man, didn't he? Whew. That's crazy, man. That's cool, though. Like, you know, like, you never, like, that's one thing I love, you know, talking to legends like yourself and stuff and just, like, you know, learning the inner stories and the behind the scenes of, you know, just how things came to be. Because I find more times than not, you know, a lot of, a lot of acts and a lot of groups, like, it was just about consistently working and grinding but being in the right place at the right right time you know what i mean it's like when hard luck and when hard work and luck meet each other is when that like break always happens you know what i mean it's like always these weird little yeah. moments these weird All right moments. i was always I, I was always taught that luck is preparation plus opportunity so you know that's that's part of it man but you gotta understand we did a lot of studying bro like we did a lot of we gonna wear this we gonna move like this we gonna you know what I'm saying yeah. <laughs> like we gonna not be scared to move do this <laughs> we gonna do it like this you know what I'm saying we gonna stand out if somebody on the airplane does not ask you what you do you have on the wrong outfit yeah that's how we took it that's how deep it was for us like get out of the pillow you know what I'm saying? 
Like, you know how hard it was for me now to get out of polo? Yeah. Like, get out of it. Go put on some yellow fatigues with a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, because you guys, you guys had a very uh, original style, too, when you guys hit the scene. So I was kind of curious, like, with you, you know, saying you've always been into, like, the marketing and, like, you know, that kind of side of things. Was that always kind of your vision? Like, you know, the the, you, the way you guys swagged and well, 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 what it is is it never was a meeting to say, hey, y'all, this how it's going to look. Yeah. You know, but what it is is, is you do it so well and people look up to you in a certain way. Yeah. And it, it showed that they always been looking at me like that. So when I'm doing something, you know, I can do something small, like like when I wear two headbands. Yeah. And I cough them up. And then next thing you know, come out first, slow got on two headbands. Come out there next time, three people got on headbands. Come on next time, five, all five got on headbands their own way, but it's two headbands. You know, I wear my jersey backwards. Then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, then Nelly, you know what I'm saying? And me and Nelly do it at the same time. Like, we can wear our jerseys backwards so you can see who, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then next thing you know, everybody got them. So it was more of that. Like, even our routines that looked like a routine on stage, that, that didn't, that wasn't on rehearsal. That was just one or two people saying, or me saying, or somebody saying, oh, that was tight what you did right there. When that hook came on, that was dope. And then the next show, I'm going to stand next to him or somebody going to stand next to that person. And do it with them. Not two people doing it. Yeah. Then them, then them two people will go around on both sides of a person that don't know what's going on, and they do it. Now he feels left out. So now tomorrow, he going to do it on that part. We don't even have to talk about it. Yeah. That's how we were. So to the point where we, like, I, I remember I, I remember Buster Ryan said, y'all don't rehearse? He's like, no. He's like, man, like, y'all do it. He said, we like, no, nah, we just do that. He's like, you bullshit. <laughs> like, no, nah, we just know. It's like organized confusion. You know what I mean? Or, or, or organized chaos. So it's kind of like, do what you want to do. And then when that when you hear them words right there, do this all together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it looks like a whole lot of, you know, like we straight up be sitting in the living room rehearsing. We special, man. As, as I look back, I just said, realize how special connection is and, like, knowing that you, it's okay to be Derek Fisher and it's okay to be Dennis Rodman and it's okay to be Michael Jordan and it's okay to be Cartwright or a new boy. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to be these people. It's okay to be the coach. It's okay to be the owner. It's okay to be the customer sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So just knowing your part and knowing where you're in life in different situations, man, is is it's the blessing for real yeah definitely and like that's crazy that you guys never rehearsed or anything even like your music videos it's like I can almost tell the type of things you're talking about like you know like in the Midwest Swing video there's some of it and stuff but like little like new like movements you guys yeah all that come from all that all, it, it start, and it sometimes starts before the stage it starts in the studio on playback yeah and we just raise our hand like oh and then it'd be like oh my colors blue and it stopped Keep it going, and then, you know what I'm saying? And we just develop it. Now, by the time you see it, she, it looks like coordination. Yeah. You know? Now, when we do a rehearsal, we might do a sound rehearsal. Yeah. You know, but we don't do, like, look at hand, like, we don't do choreography rehearsals. You know what I'm saying? All that comes from mind and just being around each other so much. You know what I'm saying? That we just and we did so many shows, man. We was on the road like three three hundred and twenty days out of three sixty five. So Yeah. For at least three years straight. Word, man, and um, what like uh, another thing you said too that I that I found interesting. You said that when you guys um were working on the Country Grammar album, um, that the label wanted to put out Ride with Me first, but you guys actually took the decision to do Country Grammar first. Yeah, we had to argue that. Really, eh? Hard. Real hard. And, you know, even just from a consumer point of view, like, I could even see where they're coming from, because Ride With Me was a smash, but you guys did, you guys did, um, Country Grammar, and then you did EI second, didn't you? And then Ride With Me third? Yeah. Yeah. So was it just because Country Grammar was so successful, they just trusted you on the next one? You're like, nah, we're gonna do this next? 
No, the album was out, and you can see what people were playing. Ah, okay, okay. You can see singles people buying. You can see, you can see, like, we had fans that like, told you. Like, you got to realize, like, on the second album, nobody picked it. The only thing they got picked was how to hear After that, Dilemma, the Air Force Wars, all that was fans picked. All yeah. that was, all that was analytics. That wasn't, like... We, we never had, it's, it's, for, it's like five songs in a row that we didn't even have control of. We didn't have control of a Midwest swing for real. Like, we didn't want to even, but we wanted to know that it was a Midwest stuff. So we went along with stuff. You know what I mean? We could have forced the issue, of course. But we knew, see, the label, you had to find out what the label wanted to do that first for in the first place. Yeah. Then you play it that way. So, but why do y'all want to be first? Oh, because y'all already know it's going to go overseas, it's going to go to Canada, it's going to go. You already know what type of song it is because they've been there before. We haven't. Yeah. So they knew what would blow us up, but we knew if we blew up on that song, Touch the Ground is already a hard battle to get out of. So I'm not definitely going to dig my own all the way to ride with me. Do you know how long it took Lil Wayne to get out of the wobbly wobbly? Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. It takes it take you a long time to get out of that. So you got to watch where you go in at. Because you end up being that person and you have to fight backwards. Like, I think, for instance, like, I think, what's name fall backwards? Uh, Cassidy. Yeah. You know, he come at six in the morning, or Kelly, and then they like, man, that ain't street at all. And this is, this is. so he gonna come back different. Like, oh, where you going? Get this money. Your fans gonna tell you. A lot of a lot of people have strong enough fans where they you hear it so much that you almost think you got to change it. You know what I'm saying? Like Jeezy changed his. Like he went big and then his second album he put on a suit or something. Man, they clown him. Man, you you ain't Jay Z. You better put it back on the diggies. Yeah, yeah. You know he riding and made back with his foot out the window and all that. Oh no, they like uh uh-uh. uh. You in the canyon and the video look all good. No, uh-uh. come on back. Yeah, we, we want to see the house. Because artists are go fast. You'll go fast when you get money, but you got to realize that your customer hasn't went anywhere yeah. in the last year. You know, so they still in the covers. You was yelling covers, and now you're in the Rambo. It's kind of weird sometimes. And then your beats is different because you're doing it with a producer you always wanted to do it with, and you can afford it. Yeah. And the studio is different, and then... Your mind frame is different because you actually went to Miami and stayed there for two weeks. And you know what I'm saying? You actually lived in that L- LA for six months. You know, you actually, you know what I'm saying? You live in different, so your rap's different, but your customer is not. Yeah, that's actually, it's a weird, it's a weird predicament to be in. You know what I'm saying? It's really well put, man. That's actually, you know, that's a, that's probably the testament to why a lot of artists, you know. Kind of, it was like what we were talking about earlier, but come in the game, drop something that's like classic or whatever, but then, you know, slowly lose their fans album after album after that, because it's like, well, you know. Yeah, like, you got to think, how hard is it, how hard is it for 50 to do a rap when he came in as the person that's, see, it's easier for Rick Ross and Jay-Z a little bit, because they always talk boss talk. Yeah. So somewhere in your mind, you can see them doing this, and still somewhere they got a hundred birds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but when you come in from fifty, the shooter, the the grimy one, for another person, and then you right here on on the Fortune 500, it don't sound right now. You you can't be the pusher. Yeah. So your music is pushy. It's real like street and really like nah. I don't see you doing that yeah. at all. But I can see Rick Raw doing what he's talking about. I can see Jay-Z doing what he's talking about because the way that he talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a fact. So 50, 50 looks like a character, which I know it would. You know, you look like a character. So it's like right now it's time for so, this one to be so real that it's harder. Yeah. That don't mean he never did it, but it's just harder to portray when we just seen you put your hand in the cement. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You, was that something you guys? Kept, uh, so that like was that something you guys are very conscious about too? Then like you know, when first coming out and you know, like it was like th- that's why country grammar had to come first. It's like we got to represent who we are and stuff. But even like even the music all around, like you guys had you know some edgy bars and stuff. But you guys never really made extremely edgy music. Like you almost you had an image that it was like 
kind of like now that you're saying all this, it's like your guy's image was always something that like, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't not like, no matter how big you got, it's not like it changed how your ability to keep it real or be you. You know what I mean? You guys are always you. Because it was just easy because but, but what you have to understand is that if you really go into it, it really is a lot of street stuff in there. It's just how we say it. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's not we always been, we always been head of curve. We always had X pill in the music. We always pop bottle. We always we more girl we like girls. So we never I don't wanna talk about the fact that I'm really for real for real. But I don't wanna talk I only wanna keep saying I tie you up and shoot you. That don't even feel good going on my mouth. Because I didn't never wake up gangster ever in my life. I never woke up and was mad. Now, will, will, will something happen if you do something wrong? Yes. But I don't have to get up thinking like that and feeling like that. You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand that. And we were getting knowledge of self, too. So we was reading. We was at a particular time where we was reading who we are. Yeah. You know, we was, we was 5% heavy on readings and teaching and lessons. So there were certain things we can't say, certain things we can't do. If I say, bitch, I'm kind of like, I feel bad about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it was certain things that our regular life invaded on that. And then we recorded that, a lot of music out of town. So it takes you off the vibe. If you're recording New York, you, you're on their vibe, you're mixing your vibe with their vibe. You're in LA, you're mixing that vibe with your vibe. We never did a same, we never recorded any of our albums in St. Louis. Yeah. Really, eh? Never. We always take a month, go here, month, go here, month, go to Miami, month, New York. New York was country grandma and, and free city. Uh Nellyville was Miami. Uh Sweat and Suit was LA. Uh you know what I'm saying? Oh wow. And then kinda after that we didn't do that anymore. So that's why the albums look like that too. Yeah. That's it's scattered, it's it's He's just start recording as he go. That's crazy. which puts different moods and different ways, and you end up with different producers and different people. And we didn't, under, we don't understand. Like even to this day, he doesn't even know. I'm, you know, what I'm saying like I'm, I sit back and I do this though. This is what I do. I come up with this type of information, and then go from there. But you gotta understand, like you can't name an album that we did all together that went bad. Yeah. And every album that went bad, it was done on on their own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mean nobody's writing for you to nothing, but it's about it's about energy and like I don't like that beat. Just that simple word right there make you say, eh, it's cool. Okay, let me go to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, that don't mean the song ain't good, it's just like what do people want? Like are we dealing with marketing at all? You know what I'm saying? Like we start making, and I'm saying we, it's mainly Nelly because that's what you heard. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm still saying we because if I can take the good, I got to take the bands with it too. Yeah. You feel me? So, so we start making music that was a good song, but it wasn't coming from a place. It sounded good. It was clean. It was a good beat. He rolled the beat right. It was so technical. It wasn't from a space. If I say, if he, if he say, if you say, who is Portia? You go, oh, that's, you know, that's just a good song. You know what I'm saying? It's not really a girl that he was with. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? When, when you hear in country grandma, those type of songs, I was, I was shining though, dun, dun. like that's kind of, that's really a person. That's really a person. That's really coming from a place. He really loved his mama. He, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when we start, you start getting to start knowing what a top 40 hit is. And that's the problem. Yeah. When you start knowing what it is, you know, when you are, you know, when you're a kid, you'll do a backflip. And then when you get older and know that if you mess up a backflip, you'll hurt your neck. You won't do one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's no different. I know a lot of, I'm, I'm a swimmer, so it's the vice drop diving board as a 12, 13, 14 year old that I'd be damned if I tried it right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's so, a fact. I used to I want you to try to back dive. You know what I'm saying? Like, whoa. You know, so. I just know, I don't know if that water go my nose wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> when you can, you don't know. So when you don't know, you just making music and it go big, it go big. But once you know that that's the sound of a big song, and then you'll roll with that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that, that plus us being in the Midwest and not having an 
Hopkins in New York or Willie on, on people next, your marketing is going to be where they want to be. If you're not going to create nothing, they're going to create it for you. Yeah. So as an artist, you're in the blind, so you need people around you to see and be like, hey, do this too. Do do that and then do this too. Like, the label going to make sure you're on Ellen De De DeGeneres. They're going to make sure you're on Jay Leno, but they're not going to make sure you're at the workshop. Yeah. And that's where our artists go look where it is. So you got to... You gotta do innovative things that cost the same amount of cost to go to the strip club or go anywhere else. Like just to put, just to make sure you have your own, your own PR, your own radio promoter, your own. You know what I'm saying? Like make sure you have your own system. Any label that works from Gotti to Ross to Cash Money, they have their own people working. They pay monthly and they work. If they don't have a record, do have a record. They get paid every month. They send them little chains, little jacket, and they work their areas, you know, for their different artists. And that's what you need to get on your own, because if you don't, you're relying on them. And now they're dragging your music in, leveraging it with somebody else on the label. Hey, if you play this, I'll I get you him to come to Super Jam, and then he going to come here. And then that's a, that they leverage you with everybody on the label. You know what I'm saying? If you get your own... He gonna work for you. Yeah. But he gotta be a respectful person and somebody with some credibility too. So that's why it'd be always weird. But you know, the whole game is weird. But it's really about putting money back into you. That's what. That's the whole. That's the whole play, man. Don't lose your focus on what you started with. And if you look at anybody that's winning right now, it looks like they're putting their money back on them. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, I think that's one thing with the internet a lot of artists have learned, too, because, like, back in the day, you know, a lot of artists would talk, to, like, like, I think that was always the biggest fly scene, like, you know, like, like, to use, like, 50 Cent, for example, right? He brought G-Unit up with him. Uh, each member of G-Unit's first album, Smash, and then each of their albums started to dwindle in popularity and even quality and everything once 50 kind of took his foot off and let them put their feet on the gas for their own careers, right? And that, like, it's exactly what you said, though. It's, it, you know, you can make all this money, but the important thing is not buying a bunch of chains, not, you know, buying a bunch of material shit, but investing that money back in yourself as a musician. Because, you know, if you're on a major label, you're gonna, you're either constantly taking loans from the label, basically, that you have to pay back with your career, or you can invest your own money or you're waiting on someone else to pull the trigger to do something for you. You know what I mean? And that, that's, I, I feel like that's hurt a lot of artists career in the past. Yeah, it does. And, and sometimes we, we start off with poverty. So we learn to do everything. Um, and I think that takes away from a lot of artistry. Yeah. You know, so if, it's like when Kobe and Shaq were winning, they were saying Kobe can't can't do it without Shaq, right? Yeah. But Shaq could sit out like three months. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they come back like I'm cool now. Like every January, February, Shaq hurt. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but the team was built around two people. It wasn't built around four people within Shaq. Yeah. So it really was. It really was built around two people, and now there's only one. So now it's him, Rick Shaw. I mean, Rick Fox, Brian Shaw, or you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm shooting. I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna be past these people. You know what I'm saying? So we are so used to. We are so used to doing everything that we lose some of the artistry. Like if you can't work social media and be an artist, you lose. That's that shouldn't be a, but that shouldn't be my job. Yeah. So when you get to a level like Lloyd Banks or whatever else you were saying, it's like if you're not gonna give me the same team that we had as a whole, then you're still hurting the process because that don't mean I can't rap. It's just somebody else that was around me was better at hooks and better at that, and they put it all together. Yeah. So now you're taking that away from me. So you can take the money away from me before I want you to take your presence. Yeah. And your guidance on other things that have nothing to do with what you said I'm going to lose or, or, or win on. So it's not 
not set up for a person, everybody to win on their own. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't do everything. Like, and, but it does make people a beast. So now you get a lot of people that can sing and rap and do their own beats. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I ain't have nobody. You know what I'm saying? I got my mother to pay this $200 for this little system I got. I start making stuff. I start engineering. Not an engineer. Like, the artist engineer make their beats, sing, rap, and edit, and do social media. That's a whole label. Like, for real. Like, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. And that's what so by the time I get to a certain level to even give the give it away, I really don't want to because I don't know if you're gonna do it right. Yeah. I don't know if you're gonna do it like me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now we tired, now now you're on Adderall, now you're on Coke, now you now you drink a lot. Shit. See how they went. That was just some shit. It's crazy too, man, that you say that kind It's of crazy, you know. Like like being like being being a person that can raise their hand in the industry and say, I've never touched anything besides cannabis driven products. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, there's not many. There's not many, man. Man, not many at all. And it's almost like living it, it's almost like I can see why I'm a bit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Y'all would drive you crazy if you're not all the oh man. And now that depends on how you grew up. Yeah. That depends on a lot of different things. The girl you with, the uh, the company you keep, the uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you can dodge it. Cause I haven't even really even been in the room to see it if I ain't the one pushing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't even been in a round to where people be like, You want some? I ain't even been in that predicament like this. But like twice. And I've been to some crazy parties. Yeah. So that's a good too. You a know lot what I'm of saying? it is the uh, company you that's keep. Crazy. A lot of it is the company you keep. That's for sure. Yeah, but this shit would drive you crazy. In other words, I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, it's you're fun. doing everything, man. <clears throat> the game is crazy now, man. Because like these labels too, you know, they they wait till artists are popping, but then when they sign the artists, it's like it's no wonder these labels, you know, put minimal effort into anything anymore, like A and Ring or anything. There's no departments for this shit. It's because like they sign an artist and this artist already is basically a label themselves. It's like you said, this artist already produces their own shit. They already yeah. you know what I mean? sing their own hooks, yeah. engineer their if own I, music. If I could save some salaries, because they used to have a rep for a rep, a rep, everywhere you go, you got a rep with you. Uh, Universal rep is here. We down south, we know that's the rep. We in the Midwest, we got this rep. Yeah. We West Coast, we got Paul. We got, you know what I'm saying? All of them is $200 uh, jobs. Yeah. So if I can cancel that, so now I can just say, hey, you already got people that like you already? <laughs> I'm saying you. That's the lazy shit in the world. I'm saying you. But what artists don't know is that you have to get signed twice. Meaning, the same thing you did to get signed, they want you to do that again to get money put behind you. Yeah. So either you're going to work that in the deal right now, like, hey, I'm going to do a mixtape, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and I want you to fund it. Without me having to come and ask you every time, I want to know that these are, I know this getting done, I want this amount of marketing dollars. I want to do this in marketing. I want to go on a roll on those 13 cities. I want to bus. I want five people with me. These are hotel expenses. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to ride it. It's 50, 50 grand. You got that? Bet. I want to do this. This is my studio time. I'm going to do it here. It's going to cost me this. Bam. Tell me you're going to spend that 250 grand on me right now. Like, don't play me. Because what they do, they'll sign you. They give you, if you get... And the hundred dollars, they're going to give you $50,000 and say the other 50 come your album done. Now, is you going to get the chance to even do it? I don't know. Because they want you to go work another song or, for one, they 60 years old and probably not in our culture. Yep. For real. So, they only got you on numbers. So now, they, that means they can't judge a song or talent. They judge what the other people like. So now they want you to do that again, and then they're going to judge you. But they never judged the first one. Yeah. So they say, I don't think you have a song. Well, you ain't, if 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 I'd have brought, if Chief Keith would have brought that song straight to the label, it wouldn't have went. No, not at all. 
They would have, they would not have okay. understood that. Exactly. So you have to get the following first. So now if I bring you another song, how you gonna judge it? When you didn't you couldn't even judge you wouldn't even even have judged that one, that one. It's true and that's, that's why a I hard game. You know. That's fucked up. So you might as well do it yourself. You might as well do shit yourself. Go tell you yo every every new artist goal, their goal should be to sell five thousand copies of something. At ten dollars. Yeah. And that'll change your life. Inspiration, energy, and everything. If you, if you, because you can't go to college right now and make 50 a year right now. That's true. That's crazy. That's crazy as hell, ain't it? You got to go, you got to go four plus years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In order to make over 50, right? 50 grand. So what I'm saying is, if the artist makes 50 grand on a project, I'm just saying a number. And then you come back around, you sell again, you should be going higher than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it gets to the point where now you're making noise. So whoever comes to get you, they ain't gonna have to pay you out because you can do that without them. They can't come give you no little money because you can do it yourself. Yeah. So if I'm making a hundred grand on my own a year, you come here and say, you finna own all my shit for 250000 I'm cool on that. But if you finna give me uh, some millions, right? And I get majority of my rights. Now I put them in predicament because they didn't give you the millions. They got to give it back. Yeah. So if I keep giving out a hundred thousand, forty thousand, that ain't shit. So they can leave you sitting there because they ain't worried about it. But the more popular you are, the more moves you make on your own, the more you work at the beginning. So they gave away their money. They got to get it back. Yeah. So they're gonna at least try. That's how you know you're gonna get a try if you. If you sign for a lot, that's how you know you're going to get a track. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So, if you get up to where somebody comes and get you, you probably don't even want them no more dollars. You'd be like, do my distribution. Because that's the part you hate. Yeah. That's the part that during your nerves, or some of the marketing during your nerves, you know. But you can hire the, hire the outsource that, though, and let them be your own. Pay them. Like, I'll pay for lawyers by the hour, no percentage. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck that shit. But you got to get people to believe in you, man. From producers to neighborhood money to family members and all that. And go get you a budget. Yeah. That's what I'm about to, I'm about to redo that right now. No matter whatever you want. If you look on, you look up, you'll see people raising money all day on Kickstarter and Indiegogo's. And they got more money than you need. Fuck that. Let like everybody do it. Like, I've been doing something for the community right now. I'm I'm over here cooking up this this uh <laughs> I'm over here cooking up this situation for the young adults in the inner city. Like some movies, play books, and shit like that. Yeah. So, um, I'm involved in a lot of the St. Louis greats and um, giving the young adults a chance to even know they can act or not. So, everybody try out. You know. Because you won't go. I know a kid is not going to a Romeo or Juliet class if they halfway cool. Yeah. They're not going to do drama class. But they will do The Wire or they will do Power or they will do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is a way to do it. But the whole script and the whole lesson is decision-making skills for, you know, our culture. But I'm treating it like a law and order. <laughs> That's dope. So, so it's street, but it's lessons. Yeah. And it gives everybody an opportunity to act. <clears throat> I got a soundtrack, book. I got, I'm going to do the package of, uh, this time we'll do the book. The book, film, soundtrack. It's a package, a $20 package. That's dope. So all I'm saying is, like, so that's all, that's, that's all that crowdfunding is. So if I come on there and say, hey, I'm just saying a number. I need thousand people to give me twenty five dollars, and that's really your pre order. So when it come out, you'll get all that already. You already got that, and you get to come to the, you know, what I'm saying party free or whatever it is. You know, what I'm saying so. It's like you pre ordering basically. That's frankly what it is. You know, but this is for the community. So if it's for the community. Why is it an I in it? It should be the unity in it. It should be everybody chipping in to make it happen. Yeah, trust me. 
Make it happen. Let's make it happen. But it costs to do a soundtrack. It costs to film. It costs to finish the book. It costs some marketing. It's going to cost 20, 20 grand to do that. And that's on a low budget. So that's just St. Louis. That's not including film festivals. It's not including none of the other stuff that's going to come later on. So that's the mission I'm, I'm gathering up right now that I'm about to start. Before the end of April, I should be in it, doing it while we all sitting down looking. Yeah. And then by the time all is over with, uh, we'll be already ready instead of waiting for it to get over with. And then, because basically people are really going to be saving money more than people think. They're thinking they're losing because they're not making a lot of money, but you're not spending any money. You're not, if you got everything right, if you're not doing the, if the bills, you don't have to pay all the bills and all that shit, like, you actually save the money. And not being outside saves you money every day. Yeah. You know, so you got an extra $20. That's what I'm saying. God damn. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? To think if I get 2,000 people to give me $20, that's 40 bucks. That's 40 bucks. Yeah. It's 40 grand. God, that's solid, man. That's a, that's a really dope idea, too. I like that. You know, so... I'm actually about to, uh, I'm about to, uh, I'm about to get, I'm about to send out the book format so people can read and get some feedback. <laughs> so it just, it just depends on how I'm going to do it. But I've definitely been waiting to do this. I definitely gorilla shot two different episodes already in my life. One in 2010 and one in 2016. I gorilla shot two, uh, situations. One about snitching and one about exfields. With no money, I just, no uh, preparation, no one I had a script. I just say, hey, say this. You say this. You come here. You do this. We shot in four or five hours, and I got two 10-minute situations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just try to do that because when I go into schools and I talk about XP or talk about something, it sounds so harsh. But when I show them the format of how I'm doing it, they always like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I had to shoot it. I wasn't shooting it for the look. I was shooting it for the structure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's pretty cool. I had fun. But it let, it let everybody know they can do it. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I know I can do it, bro. I think it'd be big as hell. Then when I bring all the artists together for the soundtrack, you know what I'm saying? The younger, the new, the new generation with the OGs and mix up the soundtrack and shoot videos and you know, get some compatibility in the, in the game, then that's big anyway for our city, you know. Yeah, man, that'd be big. I, that's a really dope idea, man. I like that. Even with the soundtrack, too, like put some of the OGs or some of the younger guys and stuff. And I actually was saying that, yeah. too. I was curious. Um, you know, I, I know you probably got shit to do. I don't want to keep you all day. But, uh, you know, before we do wrap it up, I want to ask as well, too, like, who who is there um, kind of on the up and coming uh, in St. Louis right now who you got your eyes on who or who you're paying attention to? If I would have, if I would fast forward my life to get, I'm getting the St. Louis label. Just remember I told you that. Yeah. Uh, who would I try to approach first? I changed the whole question. Then. Uh, who would I try to approach first? I would approach Shorty the Prince. Yeah. Uh, he did radio. He's a uh, girl likable. His music don't hurt my ears. He's crafty. He can dress. And he has a mother and a father in his life. It means so much. The whole compatible. But people like uh, MC Keem, uh, Tef Poe, uh, T Dub O, uh, uh, Saint.
I'm able to do two or three at a time, and at least get them in rotation. Like do like one offs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if it go good, it go good. If it don't, then shit, we try it. But just to know that, hey, I'm finna spend 50 on you to get here in four hours out. We're gonna make this big. We gotta make it big around where we at. We can't, everybody can't battle Atlanta. We can't battle, we leave her, we leave a smaller city and go to a bigger city. Yeah, it sounds good, but capture yours. It's easy to talk to somebody you went to school with than it is a new person. So, you know, gather this first. Or sometimes you need to go out. It just depends on how you are and who you are and what type of music you do too. You know what I'm saying? Me, I'm glad I'm back in St. Louis and push a reset because my resources have been built up. You know, so you can use resources and get things done quicker, faster, and cheaper. Yeah. Quicker. All right, man. Um, You know, I appreciate I appreciate your time a lot, man. You know, I don't want to keep you all day. I, w- I just want to ask before we do go, though. Um, so you said the where I'm at, um, where I'm at, join uh, with Murphy and yourself. We can expect that to be coming out pretty soon, right? Yep, next week. Dope, and I'll be playing that on the show. And um, the Ask Me joint, because that was your joint featuring Murphy, right? Now, Ask Me, now, Ask Me was one of the joints that was on my Wake Bay Create. Okay, I was going to ask was, uh, I was going to get Devin a dude to do the hook. Woo! Uh, me, and, me and a guy named Sag Live, he's a dope producer. I always call him Kanye. Like, he's dope. Um, he reminds me of... And I was almost mad when Ty Dolla Sign came out, like, because my friend is him. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, oh, he beat you to a little bit. You got to wait a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he, he's that type of vibe. You know what I'm saying? So he's in the studio. He has a studio in Vegas now. But me and him sat down and did six songs in two days. And, you know, last year, and uh, the Ask Me joint was one of the joints. And Murph jumped on it. And uh, it's just my vibe. You know what I'm saying? If you listen to the hook, it's just... Uh, you know what I mean? I don't want no number three, sit back, smoke, talk business. You know what I'm saying? Like some player shit. I'm on some player, smoke, relax type vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. And can we still... Yeah, but can, I introduced one. Can we Go still ahead. expect the, uh, the album, the Wake and Bake, to come out? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, they trying to put something together behind my back. I already, he, he, he let it slip out today when I talked to Murph. He's like, yeah, me and Sarah trying to put together your stuff. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but Murphy's Quincy Jones though, so uh, you know I'm letting him roll with it. You know he let me roll with creativity and putting plans together, and I let him roll like we like rough and run. Yeah. So, you so know, you, you but I do feel like when I'm around the right people, man, I do feel like rapping a lot of times. Yeah. But if I'm just at home, like I'm cool. If I hear the right beat, I start writing anyway, even if it ain't mine. Uh, just to get some off, yeah. you know. When the right time comes, I'm gonna do. I'm definitely real soon though. Like not for a long time from now, but I'm definitely putting some stuff together to start get back into the element Dope. of what I do because people can hear me a little more now. Like I said, I be going back on my old raps and I'm like, that. I said some shit like that for real. I just ain't big on like saying it a certain way where you remember it greatly, but my words are great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way and that was real. A lot of my shit be, like, straight news. Like, I'm straight telling you. You all heard me saying Lambo, and this. I've never been that person, so you all heard me talking like that. But I've always been on fashion, no matter what. Yeah, I think every like, I verse I've ever that. heard by you, you mention rock and something fly in it. Like, there's, there's at least a bar always. about rock and something fly in it. Always, man. <laughs> I, love, I love clothes, man. Badly, this shit crazy. Word, man. Well, thank you very much, Kiwan, man. I appreciate your time very much. It's, you know, you, you're just a very in-depth, great business mind to talk to. For one, just, you know, your insight on the game and the way you look at things, very interesting. I really like your perspectives. But, um, you know, just to be able to learn some of the history behind you guys as well, too, is really dope, you know, from a longtime fan as myself, you know, um... You know, it's just, it's cool to really understand some of the building blocks behind it and how you guys got to where you guys ended up getting, you know, the DMX stories were great. Like, you know, I just, I appreciate your time very much, man. Oh, no problem, bro. I forgot I was even on the 
on the interview, actually. Uh, <laughs> actually, man, I appreciate the time, and I'll come back, man. I'm bring Murph with me. Yeah, definitely. And we all do what we do. Yeah. Right now, you got Murphy Lee, Murphy Lee featuring Keywine. While I'm at it, while I'm at it, while I'm at it. Yo, did you hear the words I said on while I'm at it? Go back and listen to that one time. Yeah. Man, that shit was, I was writing it down the other day because, you know, we had to write all the lyrics down. Yeah. I remember the label used to do that. We never had to do it. Now I know, I'm like, damn, that's some bullshit. I'm writing down the words. So I'm like, damn, I said that? <laughs> then, um, money, money don't make you, oh, okay. Oh, oh. I said, no more fucking around, I'm celibate. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah, I was ready to money, jump to your power, verse. Power is so elegant. Man, money don't make you relevant. Yeah. That means so much right there. <laughs> Just that right there. You know what I'm saying? And then at the end, I say, I'll give away my pair of shoes. That's me all day. Like, I'll give away my clothes. Like, here, you want it? I'll take it. I don't care about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I already rocked this shit. You, you can have that. Yeah, get you a bag of shit, man. Take it. <laughs> what size you wear? I'll see some out of the street. Like, what size you wear? Here, I got a bag for you. And they won't call you, though. They so scary. <laughs> if I can call him, and he ain't finna embarrass me and don't answer the phone, I'm like, what? Well, <laughs> that's, our life is weird. Well, we gotta get aggressive. I do, too. I'm about to get aggressive, man. Fuck that. Cause I, got some, I got so much. Man, my movie life is going to be incredible, bro. Watch. Watch. I'm looking forward to seeing and I'm big, And I'm real big on my comedy side, too, as far as, like, Creating stuff like Kansas Comedy and creating, yeah. Yeah? Like I, got some, I got some things, yeah, I got, yeah, actually one of my best friends is one of the greatest comics in the world. He's, uh, his name Darius Bradford. He's, he used to do a lot of, he do some writing for Fed and he did some stuff back in the day. He was already smiling more on the show for a second at the beginning. He did some things, but yeah, we got some stuff smoking, man, but it, it just made me think about all the things missing. So if you take hip hop, if you take hip hop and take the things that's going on and then transfer it into the comedy world because they are here now. Like look how they fighting for their own their own um stand up. Yeah. To be filmed. Look how they how they're fighting it, right? So but it's all big time production. So it's, eventually it's going to be a time where <laughs> the independent's going to have to get shot too. Yeah, yeah. You you never seen, if you go to a comedy show, you know, they might sell a DVD afterwards. It's 80% at a time is going to be a terrible song. Terrible. It's going to be a terrible, uh, it's, it's going to be them popping it out from YouTube, uh, them being on, uh, Death County Jam or it's gonna be you know what I'm saying Yeah, it's nobody taking the time to really do that $600 problem so a lot of things that's gonna change in the world period just to, to watch because if you just watch how many independent movies it is really you know what I'm saying eventually it's going to turn to independent shows as well yep you wanna see you wanna see an uh, independent soul train you want to see an independent uh, pressure look video game. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Game show. You want to see uh, an independent, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you're, you're going to see it. It's here. It's right here. You know what I'm saying? So, I understand it. I overstand it. So, yeah. Is that some of the stuff you're going to be working on too? Like, you know, with some of the stuff you've been writing, try, kind of trying to kind of re revolutionize uh, the way we, you know, some of these other industries yeah, are? Yeah, no, you have to start from the bottom though. Yeah. And like me, if, if I, I, I always been like this, if I say who, I can shoot a three pointer. I always shoot a layup too. Yeah. So let me shoot my layup, let me shoot my free throw, then let me get a three pointer. If my phone comes out, right today they already know what two phones after that's gonna look like yeah okay so that's why i'm at so that's why i'm going to the kid angle and to the independent angle of let's try you out so if i say let's try you out 
if I'm telling the world, let's try you out, how you think the movie's going to be? You know, your, your expectations are different. Yeah. Right? If I say, hey, y'all, I got a movie coming out tomorrow, it's a big premiere. You're looking at it, and it's going to hurt. It's going to You know what I'm saying? Like, if I say I got a movie coming out, if I say I got a video coming out on MTV Raps, and it looks like something that should be on Uncut, then it throws it off. But if I got some that's bigger than that and it shows up on like that, then you're like, oh, damn, you're killing it. That's why, that's why I tip her award, because we spent 75 grand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we spent regular amount on y'all. We big shark in a little pond. So with movies, I know I have to start from the beginning, but if I do it a certain way, people are going to look at the perception of like, why well, I know they give you me those. Or why you, people don't know. So they just don't, I can't start from the beginning. Yeah. Because I already did music too big. So you have to do it a certain way. And as I grow, even though I got scripts that's worth 100 million, I got scripts that we can shoot for 2,000. So I'm going to start at the 2,000 mark. Yeah. And then work 10, it up. 10,000 more. Yeah. And it'd be a credibility. That way, by the time I get to my 500,000 ones and my above, I'm in control. Yeah. Because they trust me. Yeah. Not, not just trust me because I did music before on a movie set. That's not going to ever work. Movies yeah. Don't, movies don't give a shit about you, your time. Time is money. You're wasting it. Bye. This ain't the movie business. I mean, this ain't the, the music business where they linger you along. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I want to be, I know credibility. I know how I want to do it already. And I'm going to start small in my community and then use the good small stuff for pilots or fizzlers to get bigger things done. Yeah. Dope, man. I'm looking forward you know, to seeing what you, know, you got. I think that if, I shoot that one, if, if I shoot that one right, then I go to a big network and that might, that's how the series starts. But you got to have something. Yeah. You know? But I'm prepared for hand to hand at all times. Yeah. Dope, man. I'm looking forward to what you got coming out, man, for real. And you're like, you know, love to have you back on the show again. You know, a very insightful conversation. There's still tons of history and stuff you guys got, too, I'd like to touch on. And, you know, I'd like to see, uh, keep up with you and uh, what you guys are doing, man. Definitely, man. Look out for that 2020 uh, reunion. Oh, yeah. like that. Word. <laughs> All right, man. And before I let you go, too, can it sound, I... It sounds good. I'll put the energy out there. Hey. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I would like to see that. I would like to see that a lot. Yeah, man. This shit, oh, when we come to or something, man, that shit would be so big, bro. That should be... Us and cash money or something? That would sell out quick. And, like, a state property or something, or, like, Dipset, or, like, Jagged Edge, or something. I don't know, man. I don't... That's the thing. Yeah, you, twins, I don't know. They could pair you guys with like almost anyone because you guys had your own sound and style. You know what I mean? So anyone right. from that generation, right. you guys could really pair with. Ro- the state property all, would be all dope. All type of customers too. Yeah, our yeah. customers were very wide range. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, man. Uh, before I let you go, would you mind doing a quick drop for the show?